Hi, everyone, and welcome to another DevSecCon um, event. Today, obviously, is our German chapter, but before I bring up our German chapter leader, um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our June event. June will be a little bit different this year, um, as we'll be having our DevSecCon 24 conference. Um, if any of you joined us for last year's event, you know it's so much fun, around-the-clock content. This year, we're actually splitting it into three regions, so join us for either APJ, EMEA, or North America, or come to all of them. We'll be announcing our lineup next week, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and we have some fun things happening. So other than obviously some great DevSecOps content, um, all the proceeds from this year's event will be going to charity. Um, we're doing it a little bit differently this year where you can nominate a charity within your region. Our only requirement is that it is charities uh, working on inclusivity within technology. So if you're keen to get involved, pop over to um, DevSecCon24, um, grab yourself a ticket and nominate your favorite charity. If you'd like to join us, but you've got the little ones at home and it's hard to keep them entertained uh, whilst you join our event, don't worry, we're actually going to be having some childcare this year. So join us, there'll be a separate stage for the, stage for the kids. We will do fun interactive sessions. You can plug them into that and you can join us for some of the great content. Um, but that's enough from me. I'm actually going to pull up our German chapter leader to let us know what's happening on today's event. Hey, how are you? Hi, Sam. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. So my name is uh, Matthias Conrad. I'm a solutions engineer at Sneak, but I'm also the initiator of the German uh, chapter of DevSecCon. And today we will have uh, two great uh, speakers. So we will be we are joined by Matthias Latkau, who is uh, talking about the technology behind Docker Scan, as well as Rahit uh, Sarwani, who will be talking about the discovery of uh, Notary V2. Uh, before we get started, just a few things. Uh, so you can we are now streaming live to uh, YouTube. You are you can leave comments on there, but also we do have a Slack uh, group or Slack workspace. You can find that on devsecond.com and there's a live sessions channel where you can place your questions. So we will have uh, two talks here. We make a quick break in between, uh, leave time for Q&A. And yeah, that should be all from me. Let me see if I forgot everything. No, nope. but please recommend also the, uh, the meetup, of course, to friends and colleagues. But that's it from my side. I will now hand over to Matthias for the first talk. Hi, Matthias. Hello, thank you very much, Matthias. <laughs> Okay, let me share my screen. Uh, oh no, sorry. Present. <clears throat> All right. So, hello, my name is Matthias. I'm an engineering manager at Sneak. I'm working in the container security group. And my team is, uh, among other things, responsible for the technology behind Docker Scan. So, Docker Scan is a partnership between uh, Sneak and uh, Docker. And uh, yeah, let's see. So. First, I want to talk a bit about uh, what are we actually talking about. We go then a bit uh, about uh, the software structure and information flow. Um, we then go into more of a detail how we do um, the actual scanning of the, the container image. So detecting base images, uh, scanning for OS packages, key binaries and applications. Um, I then go more uh, on about the, uh, how do we process actually the results. Um, Talk also uh, about the infrastructure, which is behind the, the command. And um, then I will do a little bit of a, a detailed thing about how do we actually recognize um, unauthenticated users. So with Docker Scan, you have uh, a few scans which are for, for free. And for, the, for these, you do not need to register. But also there, obviously, we need to uh, see how we um, detect uh, the users and how do we say, uh, how do we identify um, a single user? And um, I finished with um, a small um, piece about the Docker Hub UI, which also uses the Docker scan command in the backend. OK, let's start. So what are we talking about? The uh, Docker scan command is a, another command in, uh, for uh, in, in Docker. So you can say Docker build, and you can also now say Docker scan. Um, the Docker scan command will scan uh, a local container image, and you see here um, a very good one where um, you have uh, no vulnerabilities on the image. Um, and uh, the Docker scan command is available in Docker desktop and uh, for Linux. It's uh, available in a um, sneak, doc uh, sorry, uh, in, in a Docker plugin. 
which can be uh, installed separately. Uh, so for example, if you run Debian or Ubuntu, um, that is uh, available there. So here we have a bit more of a complex example. Um, we see that uh, we provided um, a Docker file to our uh, scanned container image. Um, <coughs> defining a Docker file um, is uh, very good because it lets us uh, um, give uh, remediation advices on the base image. So we can see here that the vulnerability was introduced by the base image. And uh, <coughs> we can now um, recommend, for example, um, an upgrade uh, for the base image. Um, let's move on. Um, so here we see uh, an example of a base image um, recommendation. So we can, uh, we scanned here an image which has quite a lot of vulnerabilities, um, 958. And we can then recommend, okay, as a minor upgrade, which uh, most probably will not have a lot of impact on the application which is running in the container image, um, we can already uh, reduce it to just 500. But uh, then there are also alternative upgrades which can greatly reduce uh, the number of vulnerabilities. However, this is then dependent on um, what the application which is running on the in, in the actual container um, is is requiring. So sometimes the alternative base image is not an option. Okay, so what is required for it? So you mainly um, need to download um, a version of Docker Desktop uh, if you run on Mac OS or Windows. In Linux, as I said before, uh, we have the Scan CLI plugin, uh, which you can um, download or either also, uh, or also um, Compile yourself. Um, you need a Docker Hub account. And if you want to have more than 10 scans, uh, you also need to have an account with Sneak. Right. <clears throat> so now a bit about the structure. So you see here that we uh, do communicate with the local Docker daemon, uh, which is usually um, the, the thing which, which um, has authority over your local container registry. And where um, we would then also list or take the, the images uh, which you want to scan uh, from. And um, you see here that uh, the, um, the actual mechanism which scans the images, the uh, Snoop Docker plugin, is wrapped in a lot of layers. So we have in the outer layer the uh, Docker command line. From the Docker command line, um, there is an interface where it supports plugins. In the plugin, as I said, there's, a, there's this Docker scan plugin, which again is a, just a wrapper around the actual SNCC CLI. And inside the SNCC CLI, we have the so-called SNCC Docker plugin. So this is a, just a piece of code which contains all the, the scanning logic. So from the information flow, um, what does the Docker scan actually do? So we, um, so um, as a user, we say, okay, scan, an image, docker scan my image. Um, <clears throat> what we then do is we contact the local docker daemon and tell the docker daemon to save an image. So it's literally, we run a command called docker save, which outputs um, a tar file, <clears throat> which contains all the information uh, from the container image. We do then uh, a static analysis. Um, that's very important um, because you scan here uh, potentially a malicious code, so it's very important for us to not execute anything. Um, once we have done the static analysis, we then uh, have extracted the base image, the OS packages, um, some key binaries, which I will explain a bit later, and uh, some application dependencies. We then, <clears throat> from Sneak, we get them back uh, some vulnerabilities, and these are then displayed to the user. Um, so let's go a bit about the details. Uh, what does the scanning actually do? So we try to detect uh, base images. Um, the reason why we are very keen on base images is that we can shortcut a lot of the um, process. <clears throat> uh, we can pre-scan popular base images and know already the number of vulnerabilities in advance. And uh, with this, we can then also obviously recommend uh, better versions of the base image. Um, we do this um, through two, uh, two potential things. So the older method is uh, that uh, the user needs to provide the actual Docker file which was used to build the image via the file parameter. In the uh, newer versions of the plugin, we have uh, fingerprinting where we can 
uh, hash the, the uh, layers on the image and uh, on on um, SNCs side we have a, a lookup service which also collects uh, layers in which uh, um, hashes then popular base images. Um, we also uh, then uh, go on and uh, to try to detect uh, installed OS packages. So here we uh, try to read the uh, databases from the actual um, package managers, which can be Alpine and uh, Debian. Uh, we also support Red Hat, which is a little bit more tricky uh, because Red Hat uh, uses a database which is in the Berkeley DB format. So there we had to actually reverse engineer how uh, to read this in a, in a static way. Um, another thing, key thing which we do uh, when we scan the images is we try to take key binaries. So key binaries are binaries which are copied onto the container image, but which are not uh, controlled by the package manager. Uh, so for example, a node binary or an open JDK binary. Uh, we then uh, also scan the image for um, applications. So in an application can be just a simple manifest file like a package.json or a log file, uh, which contains already a lot of uh, dependencies. Um, we also have uh, a service which um, can contact Maven Central for jar file hashes. So also when we go then through the uh, container image and we find jar files, we uh, calculate a SHA-1 hash, send this back to the same site and then uh, try to look this up in Maven Central and uh, then convert the hash into an actual library, which we then can uh, analyze and, and, and say, okay, uh, if there are any known vulnerabilities for a specific library. And a uh, very new thing which we now uh, do recently is we can also analyze Go binaries. So there we just look for the ELF headers and we extract the dependencies um, mm -hmm. from the file itself. However, we can only do this if the uh, symbol table and debug information have not been stripped. So how does it, does it look in the end? So <clears throat> for, for each analysis, we come up with a, with a uh, different data structure. So the installed OS packages and the detected applications will both um, usually result in a dependency graph. Anything which we hash, um, we just have a list of hashes which we then send back. So how does it then work? <clears throat> so we have now our scanned results. We send them over to, to SNCC and uh, we then receive the results in an API service called registry. So in registry, uh, we then first uh, send over uh, things to our hash lookup services, which then convert um, hashes into, in, into actual uh, dependencies. Uh, we have then a, a service called Docker Depths, which uh, looks up uh, base image information. So, there is also um, another service which collects uh, popular base images and stores them in the database. This service then looks up in this database and says, okay, uh, for a particular base image, how many known vulnerability, vulnerabilities do we have? And for everything else, uh, we then have a, a lookup service which converts dependencies into vulnerabilities called Phoenix. Uh, we match uh, based on distribution, release, dependency name, and version. Um, which then in background queries our vulnerability uh, database, which is uh, maintained by Resnick. So pre-calculating the results, uh, so as I said, some uh, results can be pre-calculated. Um, uh, so for base images, we, we scan public images uh, usually from, from Docker Hub. For the key binaries, um, we do um, hash uh, the binary distributions of popular applications. So for example, Node. Node uh, um, has a lot of versions on their FTP server. We scan the server whenever a new version comes out, <coughs> we hash it and uh, analyze it also for vulnerabilities. So the scan results, um, we get our, at some point the scan result back. Um, we do have, um, two details which I wanted to point out. So we have a so-called vulnerable path through the dependency graph. So here we say, okay, how do we reach a certain vulnerability? So we see here in the example, we have an integer overflow and this was found in, in Perl. And with the um, vulnerable path, you can see also uh, the applications 
uh, which then include uh, this Perl dependency and also how this Perl dependency is uh, um, being included into the actual application. And we can also see that it was um, introduced uh, from, from the actual base image. So it's not something which co was copied afterwards. <clears throat> so a very good um, example is, is also how do we actually know on which image layer a certain vulnerability was introduced. Um, so the first solution is, of course, if we have the, the Docker file, we just can count the commands in the Docker file. Each new uh, item in the Docker file will create a new image layer, and we then can just uh, count backwards. So we know from the uh, container manifests which layers are included in the uh, container image, and each layer is usually done by a um, command in, in the Docker file. So only, obviously certain commands create these layers, but uh, we can scan for them. Now, we can also do this without a Docker file. And here's, this is a, quite an interesting uh, solution. Um, so without the Docker file, we can query for the uh, so-called Docker history. And in the history, we see all the commands which were um, being used to create a certain container image. Um, but here now, the difficulty is, how do we know which commands belong to a certain layer? So we see here, for example, four, four commands, but we have only three, three, three layers. And um, <clears throat> the answer there is we can go by uh, time. So the time tells us, um, or it gives us a good um, indication of which um, commands belong to a certain layer. Um, so now, now I want to talk a bit about the infrastructure. Uh, so our desktop uses on a large scale um, uh, a dedicated infrastructure. The reason why there is a dedicated in infrastructure is on one side to handle the, the scale better and protect um, uh, the other infrastructure, but it has also um, security considerations uh, because um, um, a lot of the, the users which, which we get there are um, are unauthenticated and as such need to um, <clears throat> be handled with a bit more care than, than authenticated users. Um, so how do we recognize actually unauthenticated users without an account? Um, so uh, for our, the Docker scan um, solution, we uh, decided on a thing called JWT tokens. <clears throat> and uh, JWT um, is a standard uh, trans to transmit secure information between parties as a JSON object. Uh, JWT, JWT stands for JSON Web Tokens. Um, so you, in the body of, of such a token, you state certain claims, and these claims can be signed and verified by a public uh, private key uh, encryption. It's also possible to do symmetric, in, in, um, symmetric encryption but then you would need to have a shared secret. So a public private key uh, encryption is, is better in uh, for our solution with uh, Docker scan. It's usually uh, then uh, put into a base64 encoded strings, which are then uh, separated by a dot. Um, so here's an example, uh, Java web token, uh, with which we use. So we have a header <coughs> where we state the algorithm um, which was used for, for signing media type and um, a hint uh, to indicate which key can be used for verification. So the, the whole thing works, if I go back, that uh, Docker publishes um, uh, a key store uh, which is consumed by Docker scan and uh, by, by SNCC and um, we can use now the, the key ID to match and see, okay, uh, which key was used or which key should be used to verify um, a certain token. The body is then, um, as I said, uh, contains claims. Uh, so you have, for example, the, the subject claim, which is the, the ID which identifies a particular user. Uh, it uh, then contains also uh, timestamps which tell us whether a token is still valid. So usually it's only valid for one hour, which uh, makes the whole process quite uh, secure. And uh, yeah, we have then also 
uh, either the intended recipients, which we also check check against. Um, so signing is done uh, via a cloud-based API. So Docker publishes basically these uh, the, the key stores called JWKS uh, resources, and uh, yeah, they they support uh, quite a few algorithms there. We use only one. Um, so the uh, verification is then done through, through this uh, key store, and we uh, validate the issuer, expiration, and recipient claims uh, before um, declaring a request to be authenticated and uh, before uh, providing vulnerability information. Um, so now I'm almost at the end of my presentation. <coughs> this goes fast. Um, so um, the integration is uh, also used uh, for the Docker uh, UI. <clears throat> um, there you can upload Docker images uh, to Docker Hub. Um, so in Docker Hub, uh, we can then uh, scan images. So I'll upload and scan uh, images. But um, for this, you need to have either a pro or a team plan subscription. So this is not unfortunately not available for, for free users. And uh, it's uh, enabled uh, automatically for all pushed um, images. Um, so the, it's possible then to, to get also a vulnerability report, <clears throat> uh, which then displays all the vulnerabilities uh, based on ordered by, by severity um, for a given container image. Um, so that's about it. Um, there are obviously also future plans um, for making the scanning results more precise. Um, so in the moment, um, we sometimes struggle uh, to classify um, certain vulnerabilities. So this can, can, can be improved. Um, the reason there is that vulnerabilities come from a variety of different databases. And it's sometimes difficult to, to match up the, um, the, the scoring to, to, be, um, to have a coherent uh, scoring uh, scheme. Um, the base, recommend, uh, base image recommendations can also be improved. <clears throat> so here, the main problem is the versioning. So different uh, um, publishers use different versions uh, for, for, for base images or version, version schemes. And also there, it's, it's tricky to <clears throat> sometimes uh, infer what is actually a newer version, especially when um, code words or code, uh, code names are in, involved so uh, and Jesse, for example, um, which which version that does it uh, does it map to? Um, <clears throat> it's also desirable to have better Linux support. So in the moment, the Docker scan plugin is only available for few distributions, and it would be nice to have more distributions. And another very interesting feature uh, which we're looking into is to um, add to the Docker file analysis also configuration risks. So for example. If uh, someone uses uh, the user root on an image, that's also not a very good practice, which which we could point out. That's about it for the presentation. Cheers. So th thanks so much, uh, Matthias. <clears throat> uh, great talk. We 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 have two questions uh, from the audience. Uh, so so one is, uh, can Docker scan work with Windows containers as well? No, <laughs> certainly not. Um, so it is on, on, on the roadmap, but um, it hasn't seen like a lot of prioritization, unfortunately. Right, and there's one more generic question in general, which container images are the most secure ones, if that can be answered? <laughs> so the most secure container images are container images which do not include any operating system files. So if you can construct something uh, from a scratch image, so a scratch image will not have any kind of operating system files. It's very good, for example, with Go, when you can statically link uh, your binary. At that point, you have like no dependencies, and by definition, that is the, the most secure image. Uh... Thanks. I, I just get one more question from the Slack. Is any plans to include custom rules in the scanning of Docker files? <laughs> yes, that is all, that is planned and coming. <laughs> so thanks. That, that's a question from was a question from Peter. 
Um, yeah, I uh, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. It was interesting. Uh, we, you got a thumb, thumbs up for <laughs> having custom rules uh, on the roadmap. So uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Matthias. And um, I will now yeah, hand over to our second speaker, Rahid. Your, the stage is yours. Thank you, Matthias. Everybody can see me, seems yes. So hello, everyone. Uh, seems that slides are online too, which is nice. All right. so. Um, we're here to talk about Notary V2. Uh, basically, this talk is about um, discovering what Notary is, um, how we already use this tool behind the scene without even noticing that this tool exists, uh, its pros and cons, but also walk you through uh, the rewrite project that has been started around Notary, why this uh, re rewriting has been um, has been started, uh, reasons behind, and what are the uh, the goals that this um, new versions uh, will offer. So hi, um, I'm Rashid Zarwadi. I'm French, uh, actually, so uh, not, not that far away from Germany. Um, I'm a freelance having my own company, and I'm also a Docker captain, Asia MVP. Um, what I do in my day-to-day -day job is uh, helping companies moving to the cloud. So I try to address, or I address actually, uh, everything around uh, cloud computing. So uh, containers, obviously, uh, Kubernetes, Docker, and all the stuff around um, observability, security, um, CI, CD, um, infrastructure as code, and so on and so forth. Here's my... Um, my uh, information, you can find me on Twitter, you can reach me out through email. If you have any questions after this talk, please do. I'll do my best uh, to answer as fast as I can. And then uh, let me know uh, if, um, if you have any, any other questions. So uh, what I'm doing around this uh, cloud native ecosystem is basically running with uh, Azure, Google, and AWS, which is basically uh, quite common nowadays. Uh, offering different solutions that you can find on the slide, but I'm also heavily involved in different communities organizing events in my city, Lyon, so uh, thousands of friends uh, speaking at different conferences, which is what I'm doing here, but also organizing uh, workshops. Uh, and the idea behind workshops is to help newcomers to get used to Docker, to Terraform, to Kubernetes, and so on and so forth. Obviously, COVID uh, made a quite a shrink around that, but um, let's hope that we can resume everything as it was before by uh, having the ability to see all of us, each other, have some beers after the, after the events and so on and so forth. So let's say that if you have any needs, either professionally or from your committee, and you want me to collaborate on whatever the projects, reach out and then let's see what we can do, right? So what is Notary? Um, Notary is the technology that is used behind the scene to sign and verify uh, artifacts. What we mean by artifacts, uh, so for today, this is uh, containers and images. So what Notary is about is about signing uh, those images to make sure that we know who built these images, that this images is also secure. Notary will sign not only the the image is, but it's content, uh, making the image, let's say, uh, almost invulnerable. You, you can't, uh, you, you can't, uh, how could I say, um, hide the image and modify its content. If you try to modify a signed image content, then uh, we'll, we'll see that afterwards. But uh, you will have the ability to detect that this image has been altered, and then you won't be able to um, to use it up. Um, Notary nowadays is used by all or almost all registry platforms, the hub, like a hub. So obviously, Harbor, which is a CNCF product since last year, I guess. Uh, Poetis, which is a registry from uh, SUSE, Quay from Red Hat, and so on and so forth. Um, and Notary also lives in the shadow of what we called Docker Content Trust, which is an implementation made by Docker to help you in making sure that 
the image that you are um, running in productions are signed and secure. So basically, Notary is here to help you signing your images and making sure that nobody has the ability to um, modify this image without being notified. That's what we that, that, that's what we want to um, that's what we want to to address. And obviously, in productions, um, how could I say that? Let's say that we we should nowadays um, avoid having unsigned uh, images in productions. I'll speak a bit about it uh, afterwards, but um, let's say that Notary is here to help us um, verifying everything and securing our images. And if we were to follow the best practices, then we should leverage Notary or uh, its own implementation. So how Docker Content Trust works, uh, basically this is very, very, very simple. Uh, you just have to do export a viable uh, environment, which is Docker Content Trust, place it to one. And once this variable is activated, then your uh, Docker client on your machine won't have the ability anymore to pull and sign images. All the official images are signed by Docker, which allows you to pull those images when you have Docker Content Trust uh, enabled. But the, the example that I'm having here is one of my very old images that, uh, let's say, uh, dying slowly in the hub, uh, which I've never signed, <laughs> which is a perfect, um, which is a, a perfect example. Once you have Docker Content Trust enabled, then you won't be able to. Uh, pull my image anymore because it hasn't been signed. And Docker Content Trust is here at first to help you in not pulling unsigned images. You can also use uh, Docker Content Trust to create your own keys to assign your own images and then push them to the hub or to um, any, um, any other registry. But at first, it is very, very easy to just make sure that you are pulling side and verified images. Let's try to do something. Um, so actually, I had two demo. One should be working, and the other one is broken. So please bear with me. I'll do my best to record afterwards. Uh, so after the session, I'll fix this demo and record it, and I'll uh, I'll send it to um, to Marias to see how we can. I don't know. Uh, integrate it somehow into into the recording, or I'll just publish it on GitHub. We'll, we'll, we'll see that um, on, on YouTube. So that it just that it just brought this morning. So please bear with me. Um, so let me switch um, my screen. How could I just do that? Um, all right, let's do this. Anyway, all right, so you should be able to see, oopsie, come on, all right, okay, so here's another one, you can, you should see my shell now, which is on my Mac, so what do I do, so I have a few images on my machine, uh, let's do the export docker content trust equal one and let's do docker pull um, httpd latest okay and as you can see it found its digest so the signature of this image verified the signature and then pulled out the image from the hub in this case. So let's just wait a bit. Okay, I have the image, which should be fine. Okay, let's now uh, do the, uh, which should be something like, alert, as far as I remember. Let's see. <laughs> Buggy buggy. Yep. Let's check it out. And okay. 
And as you can see, it says that this image can't be pulled because it doesn't have a trust data. This image is not signed. As long as I have Docker Trust enabled, I can't uh, pull this image because basically it's a, it hasn't been signed. Um, but there's another way um, to verify things. So let's now disable Docker Content Trust and let's try it again. So as you can see, there's no more issue. I'm able to pull my not so good image, which obviously hasn't been signed. But we will then uh, use another command to um, see if this image has trust data without having uh, to enable a Docker content trust. So let's wait a bit. As you can see, this image is pretty heavy. Um, we worry about this image. Uh, this word, uh, this image is about Dockerizing, a tool that offers uh, Trello statistic application. So Alert is the revert of Trello. Probably some of you have already noticed. Uh, I should probably haven't been used this one. It's taking quite a bit of long. Okay, let's switch and find a hub.com. Let's find a small one from my account. Um, I told you that we will have some fun with my demos. Um, that's what we do. Maybe we can we can uh, we can handle one question that came up while it's downloading. Yeah, please. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so we had we had one question from in Slack. Can Notary outsource the private key operation of signing the image to, for example, an HM, HSM or something like that? <laughs> Nowadays, no. Uh, but this is. Um, all right, let's switch it out. Uh, but this is something that uh, will be available in the next version. Well, I'll, I'll speak about it uh, later on. So let's leave it out. Let's switch out to the slide and discover what the array is, not a review two is, and then we'll switch back um, to this uh, to this quick demo. So um, what not array is? There we go. You should see my screen. So how does it work? Um, so Notary is a um, how can I say a side service, uh, a sidecar service, if I could say that way. Um, right next uh, to your registry, it has its own server with it, with its own database. Uh, it has its own keys um, repository with a signer databases and so on and so forth. So the graph that we have here briefly explained how it works, leveraging not also the um, the registry that you want to use, but also Notary as a side service um, of um, of your hardware or pointers or whatever the uh, whatever the solution. What's the issue here? This is a side application, meaning that if you want to switch from hardware to um, any other registry, or you have your private registry uh, for whatever the reason uh, you want to switch to uh, to the hub. Um, all signing information are not stored with your uh, OCI artifacts. They are stored in a separate database, meaning that you can't move your images from a registry to another and then, uh, let's say, grab at the same time um, all the signing, all the trust data information. If you want to do this, then you will have to um, push again into the new registries and resign your images to, uh, sorry, be able to liberate Docker Content Trust. There are all, all other um, issues with it, um, which are more uh, security concern, but as a functional one, uh, this is the biggest one. If you want to switch to a different registry, then you will have to um, work a little bit harder, if I can say that way, um, to remove your information, your signing information from a registry to another. 
video to the rescue so what is it what are the aim of uh, not re video so we want it to be registry native whatever the registry that you want to use you have to be able to leverage notary video the same way we want it to be secure obviously and by secure we want it to um, allow the secure information to be also portable meaning that we want to find a way to um, embed in your OCI artifact the signing information without having to deal with a side or a separate database. Obviously, we want it to be portal, portable, uh, meaning that, uh, again, we, we don't want to have to deal with another server, another another database, another repository, and so on and so forth. Um, but we want it also to be multi-tenant. Um, we want to leverage, uh, so to answer the question that we had, um, we want, uh, with not the to, to be able to leverage different signing mechanism, hash mac, uh, SSR keys, GPG, whatever. Um, this is this is not something that not v one offer, but one of the goal of the not v two projects is to offer this multi tenancy and be able to, um, for example, use the um, the KSM of Azure or Google to. Uh, keep your signing, uh, your signing keys, and leverage this KSM to sign your images out of the box. Um, another goal that we can't uh, really achieve with not really, one is to have an offline RGAP uh, installation, meaning that if you are in a highly closed environment, you should be able to leverage not v two. This is not the case with not v one uh, because of uh, of separate uh, different separate constraints. But we want not video to be able to be easily deployed uh, in a offline portable uh, portable laptops or a highly secured and closed environment. And at least this is uh, let's say that this is for me as a not only a user but for the users I'm working with. I wanted to or we wanted the video not notary um, community wanted to be usable. We don't want to. Um, get people into learning a very complex SLI to be able to create your first signing key and then sign your image and then verify your images. We want it to be something as as close and as simple as the Docker CLI, meaning that you just have to use a very simple options and then boom, create your, um, create your signing keys and then boom, sign your images and then push the artifact um to the uh to the registry and once you push this artifact to the registry you will then have all the signing information embedded in it if you want to switch from a registry to another then there's no issue you just have to push your images to another registry and that's it no need to deal with uh, again other side um uh, other side services so we want of course to Answer all of those, um, how can I say, um, shiny aims, if I can say that way. Um, we have different, uh, we have different um, requirements. Offline signing, obviously, uh, we, we have to be able to sign without being connected uh, to to the uh, to the internet. We have to have the ability, as I said, to leverage uh, cloud providers' vault offering, um, Azure Key Vault, HashiCorp Vault, or whatever. Uh, but we will also want to let the community to um, offer their signing mechanisms so that um, a so your most favorite uh, open source projects can push somewhere very easily signed information with its image and once you get this image you'll be uh, able to uh, verify this image saying okay this image is comes from uh, my uh, my favorite open source products. But we will also um, want to be able to offer, um, how can I say, multiple signing information, meaning that not only you or me being able to sign these images, but if um, if you sign your images and I want to use it, and for whatever the reason, um, the infrastructure I'm working with is only allowed to sign images that I have signed, then I'll be able to sign your images with my keys. I'm not overriding your images. I'm just adding to it multiple signatures, my keys, so that 
I am able to verify that your image is signed and I'm pushing and I'm putting your images, not the one from uh, any other one. Um, but I will also offer the ability from my infrastructure to verify that I have also signed your images. Multiple signatures could also help in hardening uh, verification and make sure that we are not pulling unsecure images or um, images that has been, um, how can I say, um, altered by whoever wants to play with it. Um, how does it work? So we are the not very V2 project is nowadays in a prototype state, space, stage, sorry, um, clearly not um, production ready. Um, there's kind of a, how can I say, long way to go, <laughs> if I can say that way, but we have now a few prototypes that are uh, available on the uh, on the GitHub project, and one of the demo I wanted to show you today is one of them, which is, which I broke, obviously, but anyway. So how does it work? We have the Notary V2 client, we have our artifacts, we have our signature, and we have um, the ORS client. What we do here is using the Notary V2 client with my signature, I'll be able to sign my artifact, embedding in my artifact, my OCI artifact images, that is, um, my signing information. RS client is a tool to push into a registry OCI artifact with, uh, how can I say, let's say, um, custom specifications to make it simple. And the, the goal of the ORAS client is to get my signed artifacts, my signed images to a plain, simple registry. This is what we want to leverage here is, um, as I said again, we don't want to leverage um, other services. We don't want to push you into having a highly custom registry with uh, very specific features. We want to leverage the OCI distrib distribution specification, the basic one, the default one, but leveraging the specification, being able to add more information and by adding more information, in our case, what we want to do is, um, is to add signing information. That what uh, the ORS client is about. Um, and, and that's how it works. <clears throat> Here's an example of a um, signing JSON file, which would be um, embedded into my OCI artifacts once I'll be able to push it out. And what I have, um, let's say, closed in the bubble is the signing uh, information. So what we have here is uh, TLS, so SSL certificates. But as I said, uh, we'll, uh, we'll come in a later stages uh, the ability to uh, leverage a hash mag, to leverage DPG keys, to leverage um, HashiCorp Vault, to do some uh, different signing mechanisms and so on and so forth. The basic default one is the same as not the V1. We use SSL certificates, but um, other, um, for say, um, other steps coming up uh, to offer different um, Different stages. Let's back to the demo, the one that should work. <laughs> see how it goes, and then um, we'll see how it goes. Um, so there we go. I have my image here um, that has been pulled. Let's say if I do echo Docker content trust disabled. So what I can do is Docker trust. Um, I inspect HTTP latest. And there we are. Docker trust, leveraging Docker content trust without having a Docker content trust. Uh, so the signing, the signing verification mechanism enabled. Sorry. Um, I'm able to inspect the image and get the signing information, the digest of the images. I have the public ID of the root keys and the ID, um, the key of the repository itself. That's how Notary works. 
Uh, we have different signing mechanisms that sign the, the, the root key, which is the one that has been used to sign uh, the repository and the image. By image, we don't mean, uh, we mean image tag. So now we have latest, if I have, I don't know, um, HTTP dash dash, um, uh, sorry, double point, I um, don't know, um, V test, then I will have to sign the HTTP V test tag. It doesn't mean that if I have the, the, the repository uh, signed, it doesn't necessarily mean that automatically um, the, uh, the new tag will be signed, all right? <clears throat> so what happens in my image, the not so good image? Um, let's see if I'm doing this. All right, and as you can see, this is plain simple, no signature or cannot access it. I don't have signing information on this image. And that's the main reason if I'm doing this, I am, um, you see, latest, and then uh, enabling, Docker content trust, and then again, uh, not a good idea, anyway. Um, let's try it out. And as you can see, Docker content trust enabled. Um, I, can't, um, I can't pull these images. So this is from the hub. As you can see, uh, it says that the service, the notary service that is uh, available beside of the um, distribution hub itself, doesn't have trust data for my for my images. That's how it works. That's how we should um, nowadays uh, verify our images. Um, and that's one of um, the first steps that I'm working with my, with my clients when we uh, when we containerize application. What we do at first is okay, we are able to create new shiny, optimized, and secure images following uh, that we had before. Um, around snake and we also want to sign them making this image as i said almost invulnerable um <clears throat> one word about that um and, and that, that's one of the things uh that we want to also fix uh with not v2 is so there's in not v1 i'll finish uh, around this and then i'll open up to questions um there's no way if you lose uh, the root key to fix that other than creating a new root key and from the root key creating new signers key so your key or my keys and then reusing those keys to resign everything meaning and, and that's one of the um, <clears throat> that's one of the um, how would I say one of the drawbacks uh, from not everyone is that if you lose its um, its signing databases, and it's um, um, key repositories, there's no way to uh, get them again. Same plain, plain, same issue with SSL certificates. You have to recreate everything. You have to regenerate signer keys. Uh, you have to recreate uh, verifi verification keys that you can also generate. Uh, all the delegation that you want to use in your organization and then resign everything once again. <clears throat> By embedding those, um, there's information into the, the, the OCI, um, the OCI is about our artifacts. That's one of the issues that we want to fix. Okay, I'm not able to sign any more my images, but that doesn't mean that I can't verify my images because I, I have embedded into the OCI artifacts information, plain information needed to, um, to verify my image. Um, that's what I have for now. Been quite fast, I think. Um, don't really know it actually. Um, again, I'm very sorry for the demo I broke, um, but I'll do my best to fix it out and see how we can um, add it out to the recording before that anyway. If you have any questions around signing, how to use signing images, why we should use signing, uh, what are the pros and cons into signing images, then please feel free to drop them on Slack, on the chat, and I'll just uh, use the minutes that we have to answer all of them. Hoping that you have found this, this talk interesting. Uh, again, if you have any questions, um, just reach it out. Um, 
by email, by Twitter, or on LinkedIn, whatever, um, and just um, help me into answering your questions. And thanks for listening. Uh, thank you, Rahit. So, um, yeah, we have one question. It's more of a, a general question. So, um, from from your point of view, what are the main uh, blockers in the uh, regarding the adoption of Docker image signing? One of the main uh, one of the, well, um, how can I say? It? There are two main reasons. The first one is um, how can I say? It? Most Docker or container users are not um, um, versed into uh, the existence of this mechanism. So they, they, uh, they learn how to create the images, they learn how to optimize their images, but they are not really, um, how would I say, versed into it. No, they, they don't really know that this service uh, exists. This is the first one. Um, the second one that has been um, answered um, with, um, Registry projects like uh, like Quay, like uh, Borders, or like a uh, Hoiboy is to embed out of the box, not really, not really to be something that you can deploy yourself. But the deployment and the configuration of Notary is so not everyone obviously um, is not that easy. This is something that it's rather complex. Um, another blocker is the um, key management mechanism. So. Managing of the root key, the management of the delegation key, managing of the, the, the signing key, which is more or less close to uh, the pain that we all know around PayKI. Uh, and, and that's one of the one of the main reasons. Um, and the latest one, I would say that, um, how could I say that? Let's say that most people now, um, People that are using containers in production, um, or let's say uh, projects I've been working on, um, don't really see the uh, the value of signing their images. They are more like, okay, I have my private registry and I'm fine with it. And once you show them that if this registry has been hacked, whatever, you have the ability to um, to to hack the images, to override tags because tags are not um, identification information from the image. It's only that that helped to, to, to refi that. Then there are some change of mind saying, okay, probably we should leverage that. And one of the last thing, it's probably the, um, uh, the easy one is in Kubernetes, it's very easy to leverage admission controller to only say, okay, if this images are not signed by this very specific images, then please don't pull them, don't run them in production. All the security admission controller nowadays have this feature which is uh, very easy to um, to activate. That's obviously something I'm pushing with my clients. Um, and that's something I really am hoping to see more and more often used uh, with the uh, with the Nodal EV2 project. Thank you. Um, I don't see any uh, more questions here, but in any case, feel free to yeah drop uh, your questions in uh, Slack as well. So let's, uh, I would like to wrap up today. So uh, yeah, um, first of all, uh, thank you very much, Matthias and uh, Rahit for, for being a speaker today. Thanks to all our listeners. And of course, if you enjoyed the session, please recommend our channel, uh, the platform, the community uh, to your friends and colleagues. Then also remember uh, in June, we will have DevSecCon 24. So sign up on our uh, website to it and yeah, Again, thank you very much for uh, joining today. Thanks, thank Brian. I'm having um, videos live on the site soon. So if you're not part of the Slack, join it there and you'll get a link and we'll update the, the demo as well in the next few hours. So thanks, guys. Nice. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.